Hi there, Paul Thompson here from Spitfire Audio. I'm going to give you a quick overview of the studio orchestra. This includes the studio strings, studio woodwinds and studio brass. I'm going to dive straight in by just playing a little patch I've put together here with some horns, some trombones, low strings and low woodwinds. So as you can hear, you can get an incredibly fat sound. All of the instruments knit together really beautifully. Um, let's dive in and look at some of my favorite selections from the libraries. I'm gonna start with the professional libraries just so I can show you the different microphones and how you can use them. So we're gonna start with the horns, a four and the six player celli section. I'm gonna use the outriggers so you can hear the full width of the stereo stage. And I'm gonna use the pizzicatos uh, combined with the staccatissimos on the horns. So trying to get but a nice um, distinctive but very short sound on both instruments. And that sounds like this. And for a variation on that, I've put up a couple of different microphones. I'm using the Horn Solo One this time, which is available in the core package, um, but I'm using a subdivision of the six player celli section, which is in the professional strings package. Um, and that is that we've recorded the six player section, but we also recorded the three players um, in two sections on their own. So a 3A and a 3B. So three different sets of recordings. And having the um, individual players here, and just this is really just a four-person um, band, uh, gives you a lot more detail in the sound. So just check this out. I'm using the muted strings and I'm using the normal long for the horn. And this sounds really good if you just keep it really nice and quiet sends a vib without any vibrato and just play these kind of uh, chorale style chords. but also it works really beautifully if you bring the dynamics and the vibrato in and out. I'm gonna stop the horn reacting to the vibrato slider and leave that non-vib, and I'm just gonna vary the dynamics on that, but also the dynamics and the vibrato in the cello section, check this out. So really beautiful sound and we can also test that out with a solo trombone. And again varying the dynamics and the vibrato. So these sounds blend together really beautifully. Let's look at some something different from the top end. So here's a different combination. We're using trumpet solo one playing staccatissimo, so as short as possible. And the violins, we've divided the violin one section into two. Um, so the first half of that section is playing up an octave. The second section is playing at the same pitch as the trumpet. And then the violin twos as a block are playing the octave down. So nice kind of crisp articulation there. So I'm going to look at my favorite part of the Studio Strings um, library, which is the legato performances um, of the low strings. I think it's absolutely beautiful. Check this out. So as you can hear, um, they're moving really beautifully together. I've got them playing in octaves, which is what the cellos and basses most commonly do. 
you've got this switching here by how hard I'm playing on the keyboard between the standard kind of fingered legato or a, just a, you know, without changing the bow, just actually moving the fingers. And then um, a portamento legato, which is like a kind of slide sound. So where the fingers um, would slide up or down in order to give that really nice kind of gliding sound. Moving on to another of my favorite sounds in the library, it's the high violins playing consordino, which means with the mutes. And uh, these are small rubber um, mutes that go on the bridge of the instrument and give it a really characteristic kind of um, soft and whispery sound. Um, if we put these together, I've got the uh, violin one section, the eight player violin one section, and the six player violin two section. And this will provide an interesting contrast between the professional and the core versions of the library. So the only difference here is the extra microphones. So let me play a little section here with the um, professional version with these extra microphones, and then I'll switch immediately to the core version. And you can see what the difference is um, between those two sounds. So it's still a great sound. One of the things you'll notice is there's a slight intensity change. So obviously you've got more um, sound pressure, more signals coming at you with the extra microphones. Um, and also maybe the uh, sense of kind of uh, intimacy that you get from the close mics is not present here, but you still get the great sound of a good studio stage uh, and the kind of positioning of the instruments and all of those qualities. Here I've added in the flute solo and the clarinet solo from the core uh, Woodwinds Library. So you can hear um, this change softening the strings slightly by blending in the sound of these gentler woodwinds. Going back to the professional ranges now with the woodwinds and the studio strings, I'm going to show you blending some of the really small sections of the studio strings professional, um, which are the violin two section and the viola section, the divisi, just one half of those sections, um, with the alto flute and the bass flute. Um, and just check out this sound, it's a really interesting sound. We can add some interest by separating these by an octave. So having the violas and the bass flute playing down the octave um, and the alto flute and the violins playing at pitch. Um, and you have to obviously be slightly careful about the range that you're playing in on the keyboard to make this work, but check this out. One of my favorite sounds is doubling up the bass and tenor trombones um, that have a slightly different sound across the range and getting them to accent things within a track. Um, so I'll just show you them playing unison with the A2 patch at the moment. This is from the core library. And if we split those out uh, and play, I know we're creating a slightly false impression by playing more than one note, but let's um, play a chord with that. Really great, big, punchy sound. Now, let's compare that with the sound from the professional uh, range, putting in some of the different mics and seeing how that changes the sound. And with the chords. So you do get a different sound there with those extra mics. What's also interesting is here we can put in the solo instruments as well and see what happens when we play those chords again. So there you can hear that the texture has changed and that's an additional benefit of having the solo instruments similarly to in the strings library having the divisi sections as well. Just gives you that extra little bit of control. Here going back to the core libraries we're taking the uh, low woodwinds and brass, the lowest stuff that you've got in here. Um, the bassoons are three and the bass clarinet in the woodwinds and then the tuba and chimbasso in the studio brass. Getting them all to play their shortest notes and have a listen to how they blend together. Thank you. 
So there you can hear they're, they're blending really well together. Um, we can also drop the tuba and chimbasso down an octave to get that extra variation in the sound and to enable them to use more of their ranges. So moving across to the professional libraries, um, we're going to try the lowest instruments in both here. Contrabass trombone and contrabass tuba in the brass library, contrabass clarinet and contrabassoon in the woodwind library. So let's, um, I've put up a mic mix as well. Let's just check that out and see what those sound like together. Really nice and punchy. Um, you'll see as we go down the very bottom that the woodwinds are still going and the brass have dropped out. So one thing that I would try just to see um, how it kind of sounds is to pull the woodwinds down an octave and hear those again and just hear how that affects the sound. Really nice, I like that. Um, so that gives you an extra kind of colour there. We could even um, put the contrabass tuba down the octave as well so that we've got just the contrabass trombone sitting on top. So lots of different options here and having those extended instruments that give you the extra bit of range at the bottom um, can be useful in some cases. So again, that's a kind of decision that you can make on the basis of the style of music that you're writing. So one final example, which is a sound that I like, is having the piccolo trumpet doubling with the violins and then the violas playing an octave below that. And I'm just using violin section one at the moment so we don't totally overpower that piccolo. Um, but have a listen to what that sounds like. And if we give that piccolo trumpet a little bit of extra help with the trumpet solo two, um, that sounds like this. So it's some really beautiful blends that you can get with these different instruments and different section sizes um, and different kind of mics as well, blending the microphones according to the kind of sound that you want to get. So to summarize, with the core version, you get the core of the instruments, so the most essential and commonly used instruments. Um, you get the Decca tree, which gives you that beautiful stage sound. It's just right there out of the box. With the professional edition, you get the extra microphones, so you get a little bit more control over the sound that you're getting. Um, and you also get some extended instruments, so you get some of the more unusual instruments and maybe a few extra solo instruments here and there as well. Check out the description below to see not only the individual walkthroughs of each library, but also a really useful and interesting video that Christian has put together using the entire studio orchestra. Thank you very much for watching and look forward to seeing you on the next one. Bye bye.